Hello, Namaste, and welcome to Delhi. I'm Devina Gupta, and this is Work Life India on the BBC, the show that looks at all things to do with money, the work we do, and the lives we lead. Now, nearly 57 million people are suffering from depression in India. Workplace stress is among the top reasons for it. Yet talking about mental health is still a taboo in many offices. So we are asking, how can you recognize, deal with and tackle mental health problems at workplaces? Candidly sharing her experience with us is the famous Indian actor Deepika Padukone, who chose to speak about her depression and the battle with it four years back. So thank you for joining us. Um, if I may. Thank you. Can we rewind to 2013, a time when you had successful films, money and fame? Tell us about your journey when you first experienced signs of depression. Um, so it was 2014. Um, I'd, I'd had a very crazy year in 2013 and um, a very successful year professionally. I remember waking up like randomly uh, with this pittish feeling in my stomach. It was the 15th of February, I remember. And it, it, it just sort of crept up on me. Um, I, I, so I didn't know uh, why it was happening or um, what it was. And um, it was... Um, it sort of felt weird because it's something that I'd never ever felt before. Um, I mean, when you have a fever or when you have a cold or any any other sort of illness, you usually kind of know what it is. Um, but this time it felt different. It, fe it, it felt like something I'd never experienced before. So I didn't know what it was. Um, and just bouts of crying, uh, you know, randomly without any warning. Uh, feeling extremely low, um, lack of motivation, um, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember those those days like that. I remember it, to, you know, to be extremely dark and um, just um, almost empty and directionless. I think, and you know, you sort of start questioning your existence. I, I mean. That's what I remember feeling at that point. So what was the first time that you were able to accept that this is actually depression? And was that acceptance easy? To be honest, I feel like uh, the biggest struggle for me was not knowing what it was. And I feel very fortunate uh, that my mother was familiar with these signs and symptoms and she um, many months later while visiting me sort of noticed uh, these symptoms and she was the first one to sort of ask me um, to, to pick up the phone on, um, on Anna. And um, when, I, when I spoke to Anna, she kind of instantly knew from my voice that I needed professional help. And yes, I think that immediately sort of I felt at ease because, um, I, like I said, I think the, the biggest struggle was not knowing what it was. Uh, the day we identified what it was, the day I knew what it was, not to say that the struggle was any different, but it made it easier because at least I knew what I was dealing with, what I needed to work towards, um, and, and that there were, more importantly, that there was a cure for it. Um, I think knowing all of those things made the process a lot easier. But you said you resisted medication at first. Why is that? Yes. Because I'd always heard, I think at that point it was my lack of awareness and I'd always heard about how people get addicted to medication or how it would have side effects. and. Um, so I think it was, it was the stigma, and that's exactly what we're addressing today. Um, I think it was the stigma that, uh, and my own lack of awareness at that point, um, that sort of led me to feel like, and, and also the fact that I'm not sure if this is how everyone felt or feels, 
but there were there were days of highs and there were days of lows so when you feel when you feel when you start feeling better you feel like okay i'm actually getting better but that's not how it is um you there are high there are days when you feel you think you're getting okay and there are days when you feel extremely low so on your low days you feel like you really need the support of medication and there are days when you feel better where you feel like okay maybe i don't really need it so i think it was that sort of uh pendulum that made uh, and the stigma that made me feel like um can i trust this thing that i'm putting into my system what is it going to do for me what is it going to do to my mind what is it going to do to my body um will i get addicted to it um so i think sort of entering unfamiliar territory i think that was the resistance um but i feel like you kind of get to a point where you're so desperate that any kind of help is 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 welcome and i think that's the day i started taking my medication and and of course i think a little bit of talking through with uh, uh with my doctors uh gave me some sort of ease and um so i think that was the initial uh resistance well you continued working uh through this entire period of your life uh you were in constant spotlight you were meeting people going to award events with a smile on your face were people around you who were working with you aware of what's going in uh not initially not initially uh because i think i myself was sort of struggling and battling with what i was dealing with and and what is it that i was going through before i could even share it with anyone else uh so no initially it was my own personal struggle and in fact that sort of led me to then you know when i got better to want to come out and and speak about my own experience because i felt like i couldn't share my experience with anybody and that just made it a lot harder to deal with um so initially no nobody knew of it but i think once i started once we diagnosed it and once i knew exactly what it was um and once i'd accepted the fact that uh, there is something known as as clinical depression and that I, I that i have it um once i accepted it is when i started when i told a few people uh, around me and i instantly felt better because i felt like it wasn't i wasn't hiding anything from anyone i felt like i was being honest uh and i felt like i was being supported um and i've been very fortunate in that sense to be surrounded by people who've been very understanding of my illness and um i never felt judged i felt uh, safe um and so even even after that if i've ever felt like i'm anywhere close to feeling any kind of low i'll always share it instantly and i feel like that that instantly makes you feel better you're not hiding you're not there's no burden there's no baggage you've inspired a lot of people to talk about mental health illness in india and a topic which was taboo for a long time did you experience any backlash when you made a uh, depression a public statement and when you came out with it was there a risk for your career that you putting yourself into no not at all um uh, i think there's um i've i've always believed that so no i mean to to answer your question uh to begin with i don't think i ever had any doubt in my mind about wanting to share my experience with the world so um i think after i recovered from the time i had the thought in my in you know in my in my mind uh it didn't take me very long to go on national television and and speak about the experience um and i did that purely because like i said before when when i was struggling um i felt extremely caged and it felt like a burden and it felt like um af- and and after speaking about my experience i f- i felt free i felt liberated and um i f- i've always believed that if you're honest with anything that goes on in your life um i i feel like people will always accept it no matter what it is i think and i think the honesty sort of resonated apart from the fact that it's so common 
and I'd like to believe that it sort of spoke to a lot of people and I was speaking the language that a lot of people weren't able to sort of identify what they were going through. Um, so apart from the fact that a lot of people were pro probably just experiencing the same thing and didn't know what they were going through, for, for the others I feel like it was, I, it was just about me being honest. So at no point was there any sort of uh, backlash. Um, there was one, there was one sort of negative um, article that I read, uh, which uh, a very popular and famous um, writer wrote a blog and she said uh, she doubted whether I was being paid by a pharmaceutical company to talk about depression and if I was being paid for it and basically you know there was there was a slight doubt in her mind that maybe there was an agenda behind me suddenly coming out and speaking about my mental health. Uh, but apart from that, from an industry and work point of view, I think it was celebrated, if 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 not anything else. And uh, and no, I, I didn't feel judged at all. Well, you followed it up with action to set up your own foundation to talk about mental health issues. What is your advice for partners, friends, parents who might see similar symptoms in their loved ones? I think to listen, to be alert. Um, I think primarily to begin with, I think to understand that there is a difference between being sad and being depressed. Um, and a lot of our own stigma and resistance comes from the fact that we're not even aware of what depression is. Uh, so I think to educate ourselves and understand that like physical illness, mental illness is also a thing. Um, to understand its signs and symptoms and, uh, and to, to listen and to trust. I think when sometimes people tell you they're not feeling good or not feeling well, um, to actually empathize. I think empathy is an extremely important emotion uh, in the journey to recovery. So I think for people, um, for caregivers, I think it's ex extremely important to just be, while it's very difficult, uh, it's, it's, it's a very difficult place to be in, to be a caregiver. Um, but I think um, to be, uh, to feel empathy, to be patient, um, and to know that there is hope. Um, I think that's, that's the message I've always uh, believed in. And to yourself, going back to 2013 and 14 period, when you look back at your journey, what's the advice you will give to Deepika then, who did not know what was going on? I wouldn't change anything about my journey. Um, while, while I look back, when I think about those months, um, it, it is, I wouldn't even say probably, I'd say it's, it's been the toughest phase of my life in many, many ways, um, even tougher than heartbreak. Uh, but I do feel like I came out of it much stronger. I feel like my awareness levels, um, it, it's changed my life in a way that I can't even explain. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have changed, I mean, I wouldn't change anything about the experience itself or how I dealt with it. Last question to you, Deepika. Why should we talk about mental health illness at workplaces? Why is it so important for you to come out with your story? Um, well, I mean, if we're talking about mental health at the workplace specifically, uh, I think there's two ways of looking at it. I think if you look at it as... Uh, in, in a professional manner and if you look at it as, um, you know, in a selfish manner, I feel like you're not really, um, the, I think the output, you're compromising on the output, you're compromising on the quality of work that one is able to deliver at a workplace. I think that's, that's the professional and sort of almost selfish way of looking at it. Um, but. Uh, I think when you look at it from a, from a personal lens, I find it extremely inhuman. Uh, I've been there. And to extract work or to extract headspace and mind space from someone who's, whose mind is actually not there at all um, is inhuman. Um, you know, so I, I mean, for all of these reasons, I think that it's just extremely important. And I think we'll get there. You know, I'm not cynical about it at all. I feel like 10 years ago, or more than 10 years ago, there was almost a revolution in India when it came to physical health. 
And I'm very, very optimistic about the fact that uh, we'll get there with mental health too. Thank you so much, Deepika, for your time. Lord to your courage for speaking out where many would shy away from it. Thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you. Thanks. <laughs>